Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Test the Time News. Episode 375. On Now You Know. Last week, we spent some time talking about Tesla winning its first U.S. autopilot trial involving a fatal crash, which has been covered across the world. One of the tools we used to get a clear picture was this app and website by our friends at Ground News. We're happy to have them return as today's sponsor. We can't do this show without the help of our sponsors, and Ground News not only helps us financially, but they provide a service that we use every week. Just by typing that headline into the search bar, we pulled up almost 70 articles published on it in the last week alone. On the website, we noticed that nearly 60% are coming from highly factual sources based on a rating combined from three independent news monitoring organizations. This tells us that there's less likely to be subjective language in most of the coverage. Scroll down a bit and you get every article published on this story. We notice Tech Radar mentions the implications of the future of self-driving cars while most headlines focused on the fatal crash. It's interesting to see the news this way when a single word or phrase in a headline has the power to shape our understanding of a story. When we looked closer, we noticed that only 10% of the sources were government owned with no national coverage. Now it's interesting to see who isn't covering this and which vested interests and funding can be a factor. We turn to Ground News for a better look at news coverage and we think you will too. Check it out at ground.news slash NYK. You can subscribe for less than a dollar a month or take advantage of 40% off their Vantage subscription for unlimited access this month. This is what we use for our analysis and it's their biggest discount of the year. Looks like you were wrong, Bob. <laughs> what was I wrong about, Bob? Last week, you said the next automaker to adopt Nax, the Tesla charging standard, would probably be Stellantis or VW. I did say that, Bob, because I think that's all that's left, isn't it? Well, you forgot about Lucid Motors, Bob. Oh, yeah, I guess I did, Bob. And I'm guessing it's Lucid that added Nax this week? That is correct, Bob. Lucid, like all the rest, have announced that they're going to be adding the Nax plugs to their cars in 2025. And how about until then? Because by my watch... That's still years away. Not to worry, Lucid owners. Lucid says that Lucid's with the CCS port will be able to access 15,000 plus Tesla superchargers in 2025 with an adapter, Bob. But that's still not until 2025, Bob. I know, Bob, it's kind of ridiculous, but I just read the press releases because I'm just a talking head. The CEO of Lucid, Peter Rawlinson, said, Adopting NACs is an important step to providing our customers with expanded access to reliable and convenient charging solutions for their Lucid vehicles. And Elon summed it up well when he responded, That must have been a bitter pill to swallow. And he had to take these big pills and drink lots of water. Okay, so now I think all that's left, Bob, is Stellantis and VW. Actually, there's two more companies that kind of added Nax this week, Bob. The joint venture between GM and SAIC in China has made a deal with Tesla that will allow all electric Cadillac and Buicks in China built on the GM Ultium platform to access the Tesla superchargers and destination chargers, starting with 10 superchargers and 200 destination chargers. Doesn't Tesla have almost 1,900 supercharger locations and over 2,000 destination chargers in China? Yep, but I guess you gotta start somewhere. Tune in next time to see who's adding Nax this week. I'm Bob. And I'm Bob. So it can be hard to keep up with Tesla's referral discounts and perks. Tesla often changes up the program to entice people to buy their vehicles during certain periods. And last Friday, they did it again. Yeah, Tesla launched a new promotion. If you live in North America and you buy a new Model 3 or Model Y and take delivery before the end of this year, you'll get six months of free supercharging. But according to the mobile app, Tesla removed the $250 referral discount. So the buyer will only get the free supercharging perk. And I think if I was in the market for a new Tesla, I'd think about waiting until January 1st, because that's when you should be able to get the U.S. $7,500 federal tax credit taken right off the sticker price instead of having to wait until that check comes from the government, potentially months after the purchase. So the Tesla worker strike in Sweden is continuing now into its third week. As we've reported, while Tesla doesn't have any manufacturing in Sweden, it does have service and delivery locations. Tesla has about 130 employees at nine locations in seven Swedish cities. So from reports that we're getting from Tesla Owners Club Sweden and the Swedish newspaper Dagens Arbet, it appears that there are picket lines at some Tesla locations, but none at others. Tesla appears to be bringing in unidentified mechanics at some locations to continue servicing Tesla vehicles, but the union, IF Metal, says that hiring what they call strike breakers would be crossing all boundaries. That kind of thing happened in Sweden in the 1920s and 1930s. So we now know that Tesla sat down with IF Metal on November 1st and had constructive talks, but their last meeting on November 6th yielded nothing, according to IF Metal spokesperson Pekka Saikala. He said, we are clear there will be no agreement. That doesn't sound good. No. 
<laughs> Tesla has finally issued a statement, though. They said, it is unfortunate that IF Metal has taken these measures. Tesla follows Swedish labor market regulations, but like many other companies, has chosen not to enter into a collective agreement. We already offer equivalent or better agreements than those covered by collective bargaining and find no reason to sign any other agreement. The union says that the issue is not really about pay and benefits, but more about working conditions and stability. Yeah, they say that some Tesla employees say that Tesla's timelines for servicing vehicles is too strict, leading Tesla to send out damaged cars and rewarding employees who do incomplete work while punishing those who take the time to completely solve a problem. And now, is this going to lead to other union workers in Sweden striking against Tesla? Yes. So the strike has already extended to Swedish dock workers, as we told you about before. They say they're not going to unload cars at four Swedish ports. Tesla had apparently rearranged its deliveries around to different ports. But now the dock workers say that starting on November 17th, they will stop unloading Teslas at those ports as well. And now Fastigets, which is the Swedish building maintenance workers union, says that they will join the strike at Tesla facilities in Hunding, Segeltorp, Omiya and Uplands Vasby on November 17th as well, meaning that those facilities will not be cleaned by union workers. And 17 third party repair shops are now refusing to work on Tesla vehicles as well. And Electrokerna, the Swedish electricians union, will also refuse to do electrical work at Tesla's workshops and charging stations starting on November 15th. And Swedish mail delivery workers will stop delivering packages and mail to Tesla facilities starting on November 20th. Crap, it sounds like Tesla is going to have to do something. Yeah, we're going to talk more about our firsthand experiences in Sweden on Patreon Bonus Stories this week because we've been there a couple times and have met Swedish Tesla service employees. So if you want to hear more, join us on Patreon for as little as a buck a month and support the independent reporting that we do every week. So we're excited to be working with Climate Exchange and promoting their EV raffle back for the eighth year. They have a few huge improvements this year. First, Climate Exchange is holding a bonus drawing for early ticket buyers. Yeah, so anyone who purchases a ticket by November 18th will be entered into their $10,000 early bird drawing. You will also still be entered into the grand prize drawing, which takes place on February 29th, 2024. So even if you don't win the grand prize, Climate Exchange has cash prizes for second through fifth place. And since they're only selling 5,000 tickets, your odds of winning a prize are actually pretty good. In the past, Climate Exchange has raffled off fully customized Tesla and Rivian vehicles, but with all new exciting luxury EVs hitting the market, they decided to expand their grand prize option. So this year's grand prize winner can choose any EV on the market. Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Lucid, Polestar, fully customized to their specifications. Climate Exchange will walk the grand prize winner through the process of designing and buying the car of their choice worth up to $112,835, which is the price of a fully loaded Tesla Model X Plaid. Now, let us know what you would choose if you win by leaving a comment down below. I think it's the Plaid. <laughs> uh, Climate Exchange is also providing $5,000 in charging support to the winner to help install a home charger or to use on the road. And they will also pay for all the taxes. So this could save you tens of thousands of dollars. Think about it. Awesome prizes and you're supporting Climate Exchange, which is a nonprofit that's doing really important work. Their goal is to help states transition to a zero emissions economy, and they believe that EVs play a key role in reducing transportation pollution. The raffle not only funds their work, but it also helps by putting one more electric vehicle on the road. Don't forget to purchase tickets for this year's raffle. And if you do by November 18th, you have a shot at an extra $10,000. You can buy tickets at carbonraffle.org. Act quickly, though. There's just a few days left. So Tesla Europe posted our Powerwall fleet in Europe just surpassed one gigawatt hour. This is enough stored energy to power an average of 41,000 homes for 12 hours. That's actually a pretty big milestone. One gigawatt hours of Powerwalls in Europe. I mean, that's about 74,000 Powerwalls. Yeah, because Powerwalls don't currently, no pun intended, uh, offer three phase power which is kind of important on the European electrical grid. That is a big deal. But, you know, 74,000 sounds like a lot. But as we reported last week, Puerto Rico has about the same number. So while I'm not trying to trash talk Tesla in Europe, I think the way to think about this is if Puerto Rico, this fairly tiny island with 3.2 million people, has 74,000 power walls already, then Europe, which has, get this, 746 million people, has a potential addressable market that is 220 times bigger yet they currently have the same number of installed power walls. So in other words, Tesla has a huge untapped market in Europe of customers who want power walls. And hopefully Powerwall 3, which just came out, will enable three phase, um, which could be the key to unlocking their adoption in Europe. Yeah. So Volkswagen has been forced to shut down EV production at their Emden plant in Germany due to a lack of electric motors. 
Is it really though? You sure about that? Yeah, I mean, you can't make an electric car without electric motors. Otherwise you have a Flintstones mobile. No, but are you sure it wasn't because VW has been seeing a huge loss of demand? But VW has been spending billions of dollars investing in their EV plants. I mean, why would they be cutting production? Why would they run out of electric motors? You think they're lying about this? No, of course not. I mean, we all know that VW never lies. It's just that a couple of weeks ago, VW's CFO said that orders were down 50% in Europe, and this hasn't been the only EV production shutdown. So you think that VW has been seeing a huge loss in demand? But I mean, isn't the whole car market struggling because of interest rates right now? I mean, for instance, buying a 40,000 euro ID4 costs about a thousand euros more for every additional percentage of interest on a 60 month loan. But the same is relatively true for all cars. It's not a good sign either way. Mm. All right, it's time for the Cybertruck Roundup. Yeehaw! The Cybertruck Roundup. So I wanted to show you the silky smooth tonneau cover. Oh, none of that Rivian. Er, er, oh, er, er, yeah. er, er. <laughs> That's nice. That looks really good. Uh, Tesla owner Silicon Valley wanted to know, is this actually going to be on the road on November 30th, though? And Elon said, yes. Wow, he didn't say two weeks or anything. So that's great. Well, they've already we already see them on the road. All the I know, time. but he didn't. He's not backing down. Yeah. I mean, we've got our flights. <laughs> We're going to Austin. I'm so excited about this. Yeah. Um, oh, check this out, Jesse. Floor mounted accelerator pedal. And look at that. The ambient lighting. Ooh. That looks very cyber. That looks Especially really Especially the rain cool. on the windshield. Yeah. I don't know why that makes it more cyber. So you'll be able to change that color, right? I assume so. I don't think it's just going to be purple. Okay. Now we have to say that the information we're about to give here about Cybertruck for this next story is not confirmed. It comes from YouTuber TFLEV. Um, we're sharing it with you because it appears to be legit. Okay. So what info are we talking about? Well, they claim to have gotten information like detailed info on many dimensions and even a photo of the power outlets in the bed from an inside source. This photo made me think that this is probably legit. Check this out. It does look like it's from a Cybertruck bed. There are two 110 volt NEMA 520 outlets and a 220 volt NEMA 1450 outlet. And all the outlets are molded into the fixture, which screams Tesla to me, having one piece saves on parts, wiring, weight, manufacturing time, and cost. Also, we get to see this beefy looking swivel tie down, which is below it. So this is all really great info if it's true. And if this is true about the NEMA 1450, and if it can provide 50 amps, which mm -hmm. is what plugs like this can provide, then that's more powerful than either our Rivian R1T with only 110 volts, 15 amp circuits, and no 220 volt circuits at all, and our Ford F-150 Lightning, which has the L1430 220 volt outlet, which only provides 30 amps of power versus what appears to be 50 amps from coming from Tesla. But again, this hasn't been confirmed. But wait, there's more. We get tons of specs. Yeah, take a look at all these specs. Um, again, I don't know if they're right or not. They they seem to match up with a lot of things we've seen, except for, well, all right. So the towing capacity is kind of weird, though, because still on Tesla's Cybertruck website, it says over 14,000 pounds of towing. And this spec here only shows 11,000 pounds. Now, that's the Rivian R1T's towing capacity. Yeah. Now, maybe a higher level trim Cybertruck will have more capacity. But if you look at the curb weight spec there, it shows both trim levels. So I'm not sure... I don't know, maybe someone just typed it and forgot to type hmm. in the second one. Now, the length of the Cybertruck will put it about six inches longer than the Rivian R1T, but a few inches shorter than the F-150 Lightning. Yeah, and I was excited if this is truly the bed length. 72.8 inches makes it over six foot bed with the tailgate up. And 51 inches wide means that you got three inches of clearance when you put like a sheet of sheetrock in there. Nice. Uh, small frunk volume, though, only seven cubic feet. Uh, if you look at the Rivian, it has 11.6 cubic feet and the Ford has 14.1 cubic feet. So, so I mean, the Ford's frunk is twice the size. And I mean, one of the things that kind of disappointed me was that according to this, there's no outlets in the frunk of mm. the Cybertruck. It's a really nice feature on the Ford, I have to say. I'm wondering, though, if the Cybertruck, they were going for it being a bench. Oh, like this guy sitting on it near Baja? Yeah. And I mean, like, you know, you have the the hood up over you. So it's like a little roof and you get to kind of sit. So it's like, can't we do that in the Ford? Well, you don't have. Oh, you can. I don't know. Is it high enough? 
I, I often almost whack my head on the Ford because it has this little corner on each side that right. comes down. It's really dangerous. And I feel like the Cybertruck has it too, but I think that's because it's shorter. Exactly. And so it can go higher without like hitting ceilings and stuff like that. Um, and it does. It just looks like a nice, comfy little seat. Um, and maybe that's why they didn't put the the plugs in the front. Maybe. Um, then this photo of the twin motors that you can supposedly get at when you remove a hatch in the bed of the Cybertruck. Uh, this is looking down on what you'd see if you open that hatch. So again, take all these specs with a grain of salt. We don't have any confirmation that these are true. Uh, the Cybertruck was shown at the 30th annual Baron Investment Conference in New York for all the world to see. And it looked perfect. No uneven panel gaps. Everything aligned perfectly. I think this was Elon's response to a lot of comments on videos of pre-production Cybertrucks that had bigger gaps and not as well lined up doors and panels. Joe Tegmeyer filmed the Cybertruck appearing at the Austin Electrify Expo. Everyone was super excited to see it. And Joe also got a great drone shot of 10 Cybertrucks on the Giga Texas lot. This is a real sight to see, right? A fleet of Cybertrucks. Yeah, I mean, you really need to go subscribe to Joe Tegmeyer's YouTube channel. He does such a great job of covering everything going on at Giga Texas. So maybe you visited the Cybertruck Owners Club reservation tracker and you found out like us that you have an early reservation number and you're like, hey, maybe I'll buy the Cybertruck from Tesla and then resell it for a profit or even just resell it to a friend or family member who wasn't so quick in reserving one. Not so fast. No Cybertruck we're selling for you. What are you talking about? Tesla has added this for Cybertruck only clause to their Tesla motor vehicle purchase agreement. Yeah, you know, give Tesla a responsible time to purchase a vehicle, injunctive relief, prevent transfer, $50,000. Okay, what is this saying? All right, so the gist of it is that you cannot resell your Cybertruck in the first year without first giving Tesla the option to buy it back from you. If you resell it without telling Tesla, Tesla can prevent the transfer and demand liquidated damages of up to $50,000, and Tesla may refuse to sell you any future vehicles. Wow. I mean, I get it. Tesla doesn't want a big, you know, black market of Cybertrucks with super inflated prices. Yeah. I mean, we saw people paying tens of thousand dollars more for Rivian R1Ts when they started production because supply was so limited. How much for the gun? Not for sale. I can only imagine how badly some people are going to want the Cybertruck when they see it in real life. Okay. How much for the arm? I wonder how long Tesla will keep this clause in effect. My guess is like for the first year or so until production scales into the 5,000 per month range. But what do you think? Share your thoughts below. And yeah, if you want to find out what your place is in line, uh, go to our friends at the Cybertruck Owners Club. They help sponsor the show. They have the best community for everything Cybertruck. I know a lot of people have joined recently because they're getting super excited now. It's no longer just a, a dream. It's actually <laughs> coming true. It's so cool to see EV sales increasing like crazy. Yeah, as we reported last week, EV sales in California so far this year are like 22% of the market. And when you buy an EV, most times you're going to want an EV charger to go with it. So you can charge at home or at the office. We just reviewed the Must Start Power EV Charger over on our sister channel. Now let's review. Just like there are so many more models of EVs to choose from, there are now dozens of EV chargers to choose from. And while choice is good, it can also be confusing and stressful. And that's where the Now Let's Review channel comes in. We help you cut through the chatter and the hype and get right to the point about what each EV charger we review has to offer. We'll tell you our honest thoughts about the Must Start EV Charger on our Now Let's Review channel. And we'll tell you how you can possibly win the one that we reviewed. But you're going to have to watch our video review on Now Let's Review to find out. Yeah, I mean, what's great is that the prices of EV chargers is dropping, but uh, also the quality can sometimes drop when the prices drop. So you have to look really closely at the build quality and the design quality. And that's what we're pretty good at now since we've reviewed so many of them. At the first Polestar day in Los Angeles last week, Polestar revealed the Polestar 5, which is their all-electric sedan for the first time without the camouflage on it. So I remember the original Polestar concept. It had those suicide doors with no B-pillar and sleek camera side uh, mirrors. Well, uh, those features got nixed. Oh. The 5 does have an 800-volt architecture with dual motors for 874 horsepower and 663 pound-feet of torque, which puts it in a similar league as the Porsche Taycan and the Tesla Model S. The Polestar 5 is going to be using store dot batteries, which Polestar says will allow them to offer extreme fast charging of 100 miles, 161 kilometers, in just five minutes. That would be 1,200 miles an hour, which does put it in line with Tesla's 250 kilowatt superchargers. Okay, and how about interior photos? Ah, well, Polestar hasn't released those yet. 
So when is the 5 going to start deliveries? Polestar says 2024. Okay, but hang on. You said that Polestar 5 is going to be using the StoreDot batteries from the Israeli startup StoreDot. But didn't I just read that the Polestar is going to be using SK on batteries, those really long 22-inch cells in the Polestar 5? Good memory. Yes, that's for the Polestar 5 GT. Uh, where they need that high performance battery. The regular version of the five supposedly will just be using the store dot batteries. It's kind of interesting because this will be the first time that I know of that uh, we're using like a new battery cell technology from a new battery company. So that's kind of interesting. I'm really intrigued. Like if you do get the Polestar five in a year or two, uh, let us know like how it charges and how it handles. <laughs> I, although it's going to take years to find out you know, how the state of charge, you know. Right, it's not the same thing as a, check out this engine, man, whoa. It's, it's just like, it's a battery. Now, look at this the current. <laughs> wow, look at this. Or right, you're standing <laughs> on the battery. It's, it's not quite as exciting as a lot of people are going to make it out to be. Can I see your fuses? Wow, look at those. <laughs> so if you've been watching Tesla Time News for a while, you may have noticed that Tesla doesn't generally settle lawsuits. Yeah, they almost always go to trial and seek a judgment whether they're the plaintiff or the defendant in the case. Well, this next story breaks that practice. Yeah, you see, uh, UK resident Ed Butler bought a Model 3 Performance in 2019, and he added FSD for an additional 5,800 pounds, believing that, as Tesla website said, FSD would be available later that year. Fast forward to February 2023, and Mr. Butler got tired of waiting, and he sent a letter before action to Tesla saying that he'd like his money back. Less than three weeks later, Tesla replied saying they denied the claim. Mr. Butler filed court papers that day. So Mr. Butler says that after some back and forth, Tesla essentially admitted their guilt in a defense filing, but did not want to settle. And Tesla tried unsuccessfully to move the case to small claims court. The scheduled hearing date was set for November 17th. And so Tesla offered to settle if they could add a non-advice clause and a confidentiality clause. Now, the reason we're able to report on this is because Mr. Butler stuck to his guns and he said he wouldn't sign the settlement unless Tesla removed those clauses, which... Eventually, they did. And he shared a lot of his case documents. Mr. Butler finally got his 5,800 pounds back and an additional compensation of 2,200 pounds. His car's FSD features were also removed from his vehicle as part of the settlement. So, I mean, this is a problem for Tesla. They said, hey, you want full self-driving? You pay us some money. You're going to get all these cool features and they're coming soon. It kind of depends on how much longer it's going to take Tesla to release FSD. Um, this case could become a problem for Tesla if it empowers other owners who may be tired of waiting for FSD. On the other hand, it did take quite a bit of effort for Mr. Butler that honestly, most people probably didn't want to commit to. I'm sure it took him time and money to do. So what do you think? Was this settlement a big deal or is it going to be not a big deal if FSD comes out soon? Well, I mean, I think it's a big deal because we we're actually able to learn like what the settlement was. Normally it's like they settled out of court and we don't get to hear anything about it because there usually are those, you know, non-advice and confidentiality clauses in it, um, which basically means that nobody can say anything about it. Right. In this case, you're seeing that basically he made a cool 2,200 pounds, which I mean, maybe you think he, that covered his legal costs. Well, I mean, he, if he had invested that in Tesla stock, it's a loss. So right. I, don't know. I don't know. Now, I don't know why I'm so excited about Tesla's diner slash drive in slash supercharger location being built in West Hollywood. I mean, we're on the East Coast and this diner is on the West Coast, which is over 3000 miles away. So it's not like I'm going to be able to drop in for a milkshake in a movie very often. Yeah, but I think both of us are excited about the fun aspect, the community aspect, the positive vibes created by having a 24 hour diner with 32 superchargers. You want to come and chat with you? Yeah, the diner is going to have two floors with seating for 218 people and an outdoor roof deck terrace where you can watch two 45 foot tall LED movie screens. Ed Howard posted the progress Tesla is making. Now, still a ways to go, but some serious concrete structures there. Oh, and you know what? Our viewer Massimo sent us this video showing some more of the diner construction site. Hey, Zach and Jesse. I'm here in Santa Monica Boulevard, the location where that uh, Tesla diner is going to be. And this is about all I can get as far as footage. It's on the corner of uh, Orange and Santa Monica Boulevard, one block east of La Brea. This thing's going to be pretty huge. He's a lot, uh, you know. That's really exciting. Isn't it awesome to have people on the ground? Thank yeah. you, reporters, for <laughs> showing us what's going on. And I know it doesn't look like much yet, but I feel like before we know it, it's going to be up and running. And I feel like it's going to make a lot of news headlines. 
Yeah, and I can't wait to visit. Hey, and if you want to share a clip you've seen on this channel, but you don't want to share the entire one hour long episode, go to our Now You Know Clips channel, separate YouTube channel, or go to X, where we post a lot of these clips online that are easy to share. So we reported back in August that the California-based battery powertrain and electric bus company Proterra was filing for bankruptcy after job cuts and even combining their battery and bus production at their South Carolina plant failed to be enough to keep the company afloat. As part of that bankruptcy, Proterra auctioned off their battery assembly assets in California and South Carolina. And we just learned that Volvo Group has won that auction with a $210 million bid. Gareth Joyce, Proterra CEO, said in a statement, we entered into the Chapter 11 process with a mission to maximize the potential of each of our product lines. Today, we've taken an important step toward that goal for our Proterra powered business. It's sad to see an electric vehicle company fail, but if there's a silver lining to this story, it may be that Proterra's technology and factories will not go to waste. Yeah, Volvo, which is owned by China's Zhejiang Geely Holding Group, should be able to put them to good use. And it's not the first time Chinese companies have bought a failing car company. <coughs> Volvo. <coughs> MG. <coughs> Lotus. You okay? Sorry, I seem to have quite the cough. <laughs> and it probably won't be the last. <coughs> Canoe. <coughs> Ford. <laughs> All right, it's time for our friend Alien Space to report on SpaceX's update. Hey, Zach and Jesse. So we still have no official date for the Starship launch. Okay, I'm going to stop myself right there. Hours after recording and editing this video, SpaceX announced that they do have a date for the launch, and that's this coming Friday, November 17th. We had been speculating it would be soon based on the FTS system being installed. Now, Starship's flight termination system explosives were installed on Thursday. The flight termination system is a crucial component of a spaceship that needs to be used in case of emergency when the ship needs to self-destruct in the atmosphere and prevent it from a crash landing. We also saw that a bunch of big name YouTubers were heading down to the area, making reservations, and it seemed like it was a go. Now, I can say that we have an official target date and we hope that that target date doesn't slip because it's unclear if SpaceX would actually launch during the week of Thanksgiving. The only thing they're waiting on is the approval from the Fish and Wildlife Service and also for the weather to hold up. Part of the issue was that the weather was looking bad earlier in the week, but I'm really hoping that the launch actually goes on Friday, November 17th. So with that being said, I'm going back down to Starbase. I will be streaming that and capturing that IFT2 on my channel, Ellie in Space. So if you want exclusive coverage from down at Starbase, check out my channel, Ellie in Space. One more thing to note for this SpaceX report. Last week, a crew access arm was lifted into place at Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral. This as SpaceX is racing to ready the pad for the first Crew Dragon launch with astronauts as soon as January. SpaceX currently only has one launch pad from which it can launch astronauts as well as cargo missions to the ISS, and that's Launch Complex 39A. Over the course of 2023, SpaceX has been working to change that with the construction of a new crew and cargo access tower at its second Florida launch pad. So there's a lot of SpaceX activity in Texas and in Florida, and we just can't wait until the second Starship launch. Thanks, guys. This week? This week? Friday? This could be really great happening right before Thanksgiving. So if, they, if it's a success then this is going to be all we talk about during Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, and if it's not, we have something else to talk about. But you know what? We have a Patreon poll coming up to see whether they think it's going to launch on Friday. So we'll see if that's going to happen. And in some other SpaceX news, Starlink was just awarded a big contract by Mexico's Comisión Federal de Electricidad to provide internet coverage in rural areas of Mexico through December of 2026. The contract is valued at between 50 and 100 million dollars and according to Reuters was awarded to Starlink over two competitors because Starlink offered the best price. And Elon reposted the SpaceX post of Falcon 9 launches 23 Starlink satellites to orbit from Florida. We've now launched 80 times in 2023, delivering more than 1,000 metric tons to orbit. And of course, SpaceX posted that they're preparing to launch as early as November 17th. And Elon said, assuming regulatory approval. What do you mean regulatory approval? Because he was making a lot of jokes about like fish. Right. So Elon was on the Lex Friedman podcast last week for the fourth time. And during that two plus hour podcast, Elon revealed something interesting about this ridiculous delay that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has imposed on the second test launch of SpaceX's Starship at Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. Check this out. We effectively need a fish license to launch a rocket. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a second. How did the fish come into the picture? Yeah. Um, I mean, so, some of the things like that, that it's, I feel like 
are so absurd that I want to do like a comedy sketch and flash at the bottom, this is all real. This yeah. is actually what happened. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that was a bit of a challenge at one point is that they were worried about uh, our rocket hitting a shark. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the ocean is very big. And uh, how often do you see sharks? Uh, not that often, you know. As a percentage of ocean surface area, sharks basically are zero. And 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 so then we will, then we said, well, how will we calculate the probability of, of telling a shark? And they're like, well, we can't give you that information because we're, they're worried about shark hunt, shark fin hunters, uh, going and hunting sharks. And I said, well, how are we supposed to? We're on the horns of a dilemma then. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> then they said, well, there's another part of fish and wildlife that can can do this analysis. I'm like, well, why don't you give them the data? I'm like, we don't. They don't, we don't trust them. I'm like, excuse me, you don't, they're literally in your department. Yeah. And again, this is actually what happened. Um, and, uh, and, and, and then can you do an NDA or something? <laughs> <laughs> Eventually they managed to solve the internal quandary and indeed uh, the probability of, of us hitting a shark is essentially zero. Now it doesn't end there. Elon went on to talk about how SpaceX had to deal with whales and seals. But look, I'm going to let you enjoy those little gems for yourself. I highly recommend subscribing to Alexis podcast if you haven't already. It's one of the best podcasts out there. And I just want to say, hopefully we're all going to be talking about this amazing Starship launch uh, during Thanksgiving. If it doesn't happen, though, I think you have something else to talk about. Mm. I think you can talk about sharks and whales and seals. Did you know that they had to kidnap a seal twice, strap it to a board <laughs> and then put headphones on the seal? They, SpaceX didn't want to do this. No. The Fish and Wildlife Service required that they strap a seal to a board, put headphones on it, and play sonic booms to it. Yeah. To see if it was distressed. Yeah. Which it wasn't, <laughs> which is so weird. So weird. <laughs> um, Can you imagine if someone just kidnapped you and strapped you to a board, but put headphones it's, on it's you? It's this level of what the f mm -hmm. are we talking about that I really want you to talk about during Thanksgiving if we don't get to see a Starship launch because... I want, I want your family, I want someone in your family to get a little bee in their bonnet and to start sending letters. Yeah. And, and you can do this too. Start sending letters to the Fish and Wildlife Service and say, excuse me, why the hell are you wasting taxpayer dollars and slowing down one of the most innovative companies on earth yeah. just, just to make sure that we, they don't land on a shark in the middle of the ocean? Just, just that's all I wanna say. All right, it's time for Into the Future, sponsored by our friends at Henson Shaving. And you have not shaved again today. No, I'm doing no shave November because I'm proving that I can grow a damn beard because everyone says like, oh, you must not grow a beard because you don't look like you. Because I shave, <laughs> I usually shave with my amazing Henson razor and I do it every single week. And so it looks like I never grow a beard. Um, I'm excited prove, for December. This is to prove I'm going to have to shave all this off uh, in December. I think I'm going to have the biggest beard I've ever had at the Cybertruck delivery event. That's right, that's gonna be fun. So you can look forward to- They won't be able to, to <laughs> tell us apart. Exactly. So one of the problems with owning an EV in the city has been charging. Silence. Silence. If you live in a typical urban apartment, uh, how do you charge your EV at night? Silence. Silence. And, and, and when you get to work at most urban offices and shops, it can be hard to find a charger there too. Silence. Do you, do you have a headache or something? I mean, what, what's going on? No, I have your answer. What's the answer then? Silence. Silence. I, I'm waiting. W w what's the answer? The answer could be silence. Silence. So I'm supposed to get into like some Zen state and like, then the answer will come to me? Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Has it come to you yet? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think I can see it. it it's, it's like a tiny car with the removable battery it, that, that rolls? Yes, you see it now. The Silence SO4 Nanocar. Silence is a Spanish company that's been making the SO4 for quite a while now. It has a 14 kilowatt motor, that's 22 kilowatt peak, wow. for a top speed of 85 kilometers an hour or 52 miles an hour. Wait, that, hang on, I just wanna say, that's really good for these micro cars. Most of them only go like uh, top speed 45 kilometers an hour. Or some of them are even slower than that. That's great. Um, range of 149 kilometers WLTC, zero to 50 kilometers an hour in seven seconds. So nothing great, but. And a 10,000 euro starting price. Okay, that's that's 
Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. And as you saw in your vision, the cool part is that the batteries are removable and you can roll them down the street to charge them at your home or at work. And you can save 40% of the cost of the vehicle if you do batteries as a service and do a battery subscription instead of owning them. Because I mean, how much do the batteries weigh? There are two batteries and they each weigh 41 kilograms. So that's 90 pounds. Oh crap, without wheels, that would be impossible to yes. carry. Uh, Silence also makes electric scooters and they are now partnering with IRP systems, which makes electric powertrains to further upgrade their vehicles. Okay, viewers, I wanna see some of this in action. So if you live in Spain and you've seen one of these or you've driven one of these, or maybe I think they have it as a, an app service that you can like ride share. So please send us some videos of this. I wanna see more. Yeah, I want to see you lifting the battery over your head. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I do want to see you rolling it down the street and plugging it in. Right, because does that really work, especially if it's like bumpy streets and stuff? Yes, know? like put it through its bases. Yeah. Take it for a little, take it for a stroll. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's time for Going Green, sponsored by our friends at Snapplate. So as you start making your holiday gift giving list, may I make a suggestion for that EV owner on your list? Snapplate. We've been using SnapPlate on our EVs for years. It's a fantastic solution from our friends Matt and Kevin at EveryAmp. It literally just takes a few seconds to pop your front license plate onto your EV, whether that's a Tesla, Ford F-150 Lightning, Rivian R1T, and so on. Many more models to choose from. And it only takes a couple seconds to pop it off. Now, I guess that's why they call it SnapPlate. Such a great solution, really well made in the US using recycled plastic. It's a sustainable solution to putting your license plate on the front of your EV without any holes. You can get 10% off by using our exclusive code now you know at checkout. The link is down below in the show notes. So just a couple weeks ago, we reported on Tesla signing a deal to sell $100 million worth of superchargers to oil giant BP. Now, just a couple weeks later, Tesla has signed another deal, this time with a giant gas station and convenience store operator, EG Group. EG currently operates over 6,000 sites across the UK and Ireland, Europe, the US and Asia, and serves over a billion customers annually. So how many superchargers are we talking about in this deal? Well, neither Tesla nor EG specified in their press release, but we do know that EG currently has about 600 chargers across 189 sites. They plan to increase that to more than 20,000 chargers across 3,600 sites. So I'd say it's gonna be a lot. Now these aren't going to be Tesla branded superchargers, are they? No, EG says they'll be branded EV Point and will operate on an open network so any EV can charge at them. Now that graphic showed that EG Group operates at like 3,300 sites in the US, but I don't think I've ever heard of them. That's because they're owned by EG America, but they aren't branded EG America. They have sub brands that you probably have heard of like Cumberland Farms. Hey, is that the Cumberland Farms where we live? Yeah, uh, maybe they'll be getting some superchargers soon. Quick shop, Loaf and Jug, which I have not seen, I but I've heard of that one. <laughs> Minute Mart. Okay. Quick Stop. Certified Oil, which is actually, you see them branded as Marathon Gas Stations. Fast Track, Sprint, Tom Thumb, and Turkey Hill. So EG Group is headquartered in the UK. It's a really big company with annual revenue of over $26 billion. It's owned by parent company Optima Bidco Limited. And the first Tesla made superchargers should start appearing before the end of this year. Hmm. It's funny how they seem to like brand names that aren't spelled right. Well, it's easier to trademark them that way, see? All right, it's time for Sunspots. All right, take a look at this chart, Jesse, that just came out from the U.S. Energy Information Administration. Okay, so let's see here. The solar is in the orange and yellow, and that blue line is hydropower. Wait a minute. For 2024, they're predicting that solar is going to make more power than hydro? Yep. So from 2009 through 2022, solar has been growing 44% annually, while hydro has only been growing 1% annually. And you can't keep growing at those two rates without... Solar finally catching up and beating hydro. And it's hard to see, but look at that darker orangish color at the top, that small scale solar. Look how much power it was making back in 2019, about like three terawatt hours. And now look to what's being projected for next summer, the summer of 2024. That looks like about nine terawatt hours of just small scale solar. In other words, rooftop solar has about tripled in five years. Yeah, incentives such as tax credits from the IRA have really helped boost solar. In August of 2023, US installed solar capacity totaled more than 125 gigawatts. So that's 80 gigawatts of utility scale solar, 45 gigawatts of small scale solar, whereas hydro has remained pretty constant at about 80 gigawatts. And I mean, that makes sense. It costs a lot to build a dam and pumping stations and power generators, whereas solar panels just keep getting cheaper and cheaper. And look, if you'd like to build a dam, well, 
Energy Pal probably can't help you. But if you want to put solar on your roof, they certainly can. Also, they can help you out with batteries. They know all the regulations and tax breaks and the best prices. Give them a call. They'll be able to help you for free. Tell them that Zach and Jesse sent you. All right, it's time for our video contributor stories. We need your stories, okay? Send them in to us at hello at now you know channel.com. It's really easy. Just make them two minutes or less. Shoot them in landscape. Good audio. No music. So in two minutes, you're done and you're going to be famous. Who do we got this week? Robert sets us this story about a Tesla wall connector giveaway that he is hosting. Hello, Zach and Jesse. Robert Borkowski reporting to you from Clarksburg Condominium 2. My story began when I installed two charging stations in my home. Since then, I graduated to install six level two charging stations in Clarksburg Condominium 2 for the residents. It's very important to have access to home charging if you are EV owner. Since then, I created a platform to give away 1,000 Tesla wall connectors to new Tesla owners. The way it works, it's the current Tesla owners donate their referral code and give it away to the new uh, Tesla purchasers. So whoever needs to order a Tesla, they need to have a referral code. So we provide that if they don't have access to it. So the Tesla owner who buys it with referral code gets $250 off plus three months of FSD directly from Tesla. And the person who gave them the referral code gets 10,000 Tesla credits. What they do then? They use 9,000 credits and they are ordering, ordering a wall connector, which then they then donated to the new Tesla owner. It's a very simple uh, process. Just go to our website, 1000in100days.com, request a referral, place an order, pick up your car, and then wait for your <laughs> new wall connector donation. We also need Tesla owners to donate their referral codes so we can actually accommodate all of those requests. Where comes the name of the 1100 days? On September 23rd, the National Drive Electric Week in Poolsville, Maryland kicked off and that marked 100 days till the end of the year. So our challenge is in 100 days till the end of the 2023 to give away 1000 charges. Help us out, get the word out and let's get those charges out to the new owners. Now you know. Wow, so we don't have much time left in the year. So go over to his website, help him out. Now things have changed on the referral code site, right? Uh, you don't get the $250 anymore, I don't think, but mm. you can still give them your points. Let's help make this happen. This is so great. I love this community. Nice. A thousand Tesla wall chargers. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. We've got so many stories this week. You get all of this extra content for just as little as a buck a month. You help support the work that we do and you get more stuff to watch. It's really, really cool. Head on over to patreon.com slash now you know. We'll see you there. All right, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories. It's time for the poll. And uh, do you think the Starship will actually launch on Friday? Patrons are always right. Yes! Yes! Sharks are not going to stop it from launching. <laughs> worried about the sharks. All right, it's time for Elon's X's of the week. And Dima quoted Elon here, the future of humanity is going to bifurcate in two directions. Either it's going to become multiplanetary or it's going to remain confined to one planet and eventually there's going to be an extinction event. Elon said one or the other. Oh, look at him walking along with X there. Nice. Elon said, X AI developer tool for improving and understanding large AI models. And this is the prompt IDE. So now uh, developers can start using Grok, which is going to be cool. Oh, wow. Ashley Sinclair said, stopping birth control and Adderall was one of the best things I ever did for my mental health. So many Americans on pharmaceutical cocktails and then wondering why they feel out of their minds. Elon says, for sure. Adderall, which is an amphetamine, increases anger and aggression. No question that it increases modern society's negativity. Elon said, you can play state-of-the-art video games in your Model S and X seamlessly integrated with your Steam account. And Tesla tweeted, not Elon, Tesla tweeted, play Grand Theft Auto while doing Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Are they inciting <laughs> auto theft? I don't know. <laughs> hey, guys, you want to steal a car and steal a car? Internet Hall of Fame said, new parent idea, take pictures of you pulling baby out of spacecraft in forest. Two, hide pictures in attic for kid to find when he's 10. Elon says, actually happened to me, though. <laughs> he's joking. 
He's joking. I think. Lex Friedman said, awesome, great work. Hilarious that just yesterday you told me you're not sure it's doable. Hatred defeated. And what we're talking about here is in Diablo. While Elon was on Lex's podcast, he said he hadn't defeated the final boss level. And then he went home and did it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, I was losing hope for a while, then saved by a brother in arms. He went on to say, unfortunately, bonding over shared hate might be more effective than bonding over shared love. Don't you hate that, too? <laughs> and he said, this is a big deal. Uh, this is Representative Jim Jordan saying the bombshell report on the censorship industrial complex that hundreds of secret reports show how the government have worked with Stanford and others to censor Americans before the 2020 election. Marcus House said, so a tough personal thread to write here. I haven't really gone into this publicly before, but I feel I need help. My eldest son, Alex, who's 14, has a rare eye condition, essentially mostly blind in one eye and almost legally blind in the other. Elon said, this is not much consolation, but Neuralink is working on a vision chip that will be ready in a few years. That is the next area after enabling phone and computer telepathy for those who have lost their mind-body connection, waiting for regulatory approval for our first human. And Marcus says, thank you, Elon. I've certainly been watching Neuralink so closely ever since announcement. Is it feasible, do you think, that a vision chip could eventually enable better than 2020 vision? The future is incredibly exciting in this regard, and thank you for supporting. Elon said, yes, and you could see many wavelengths outside of the visible spectrum. That'd be fun. Wow. Elon says, adding SpaceX crew arm for NASA astronauts at launch pad 40. And if you're like, well, didn't I already see this? Yeah, that's at launch pad 39A. So now we'll have two that can support uh, human launch. Oh, so even if there's like a problem right. with launch pad 39A, which I don't want to have happen, you would you would have another launch pad to get astronauts into space. Exactly. And he said SpaceX launches every three days from the Cape in Florida next year, every two days. <laughs> Sorry, Merritt says Lucid lost 433,000 for every vehicle that they delivered in Q3. Elon says maybe they can make it up in volume. All the time our customers ask us, how do you make money doing this? The answer is simple. Volume. Elon said Grok's personality is modeled after the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy with a heart of gold. Tesla Economics says the Cybertruck windshield has arrived. Elon says comes in discreet packaging. Ray says Elon was laughed at in the early days of all the projects he started. The analogy of Grok being a third grade CS project is not going to age well if history is any indication. Elon says their fear is palpable. Tesla owner Silicon Valley says Grok thinks Elon Musk is the best meme creator. Elon says I am become meme. Gail says the Model S is timeless. And she's talking about this 2016 uh, tweet from Elon. I highly recommend the new all glass roof on the Model S. This is very hard to develop, but it makes the interior feel amazing. And Elon said, dang, that was seven years ago. Steve Mark Ryan says, you know, you've been playing too much Baldur's Gate 3 when you start having turn-based dreams. Actually happened to me last night. Elon says, wow, definitely going to try it. I did actually play Advanced Dungeons and Dragons as a kid with all the dice and paper. It was epic. Uh, BG2 is one of the best games ever. Worth someone redoing that with new graphics and UI. The writing and plot are amazing. And then he went on to say this. The only crime I did as a kid was to steal a car with my friend to drive to the bookstore to buy a D&D module late at night. I think I was 13 or 14. We put the car back in its exact original position in perfect condition. Okay, so I hope that the statute of limitations is not that long because, uh, Elon, you just admitted to stealing a car. Maybe that's why Tesla <laughs> tweeted out uh, the GTA <laughs> comment. That's fun. Now, Tesla Fi says D&D is still a ton of fun. 5E is very flexible. Can Grok roll characters? Elon says, sure. Wow. I, oh. You know, my dad wrote a program for me when I was a kid to roll the characters for me and print them out on his TRS-80. That was the best. So, I mean... So I'm a geek. So if Grok can do it, I mean, it's not saying much. <laughs> Epic Map says, look at the lighthouses of Africa. Elon says, sounds like a lovely journey. Sir Doge of the Coin says, the singularity is when Grok can make better memes than humans. Elon said, coming soon. Tesla owner Silicon Valley says, SpaceX Raptor 2 engine, essentially not a flamethrower. Elon says, fire versus water. Elon says, Lex has a great podcast worth subscribing. Yeah, and definitely you should go watch that. It was awesome. Epic. Uh, X News Daily says news. Elon Musk biopic is in development and Darren Aronofsky will direct. And Elon said, glad Darren is doing it. He is one of the best. Yeah, he directed Pi, by the way. Uh, Mike Ben says the reason there are no dogs in downtown San Francisco is because the smell of human poop would kill them. Elon said it's rough. Car dealership guy says, wow, this is unprecedented. Tesla has quietly started listing new vehicles on cars.com. Tesla has never sold new cars outside of its main website. I'm an investor in cars.com. Elon said, first I've heard of this seems odd. Mike Solana says, I'm in downtown San Francisco and there are heavily armed policemen everywhere. Underground, drugstores, street corners. How you doing? One asked. Super friendly. Hand on his gun. All in advance of Xi's visit, I guess. But crime has evaporated. It could be like this every day. Elon said, that would be nice. 
And Wokeness says San Francisco finally fixed the homeless crisis. All it took was a visit from a world dictator. Elon said, where did they go? Austin says, you have to admit it's pretty funny that San Francisco will clean itself up practically overnight when an important communist comes to visit. Elon says, fate is an irony maximizer. Dan says, listening to this podcast episode and thinking about the probability of landing a rocket on a shark. Elon says, yeah, seriously. Holmar's catalog says, top 10 US EV brands. Elon said, not bad. And Holmar's catalog says, steering wheel nags need to be removed. Cabin camera is the way forward. Elon said, agreed. And Holmar's catalog says, hey, Elon or Ashok or anyone else on the Tesla team, any guess on when customers might first be able to try out FSE 12? And Elon says, about two weeks. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> All right, it's time for Community Mail Time. Community Mail Time. And remember, we need your stories, your photos, your videos. Send them to us at hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. And, oh, and remember, we gave away a C-neck Tesla ring. Yeah, where did I put it? Uh, well, we gave it to Belinda, Cam, and Julianne. Oh, yeah. Hey, Zach and Jesse. It's Belinda. And Kaden. And Julianne. We just really wanted to thank you and the viewers for choosing us to be the contest winners. Thank you. I got the ring today, and it works great, and I can't wait to use it up in New York. And especially while I'm up there, wait to see that Cybertruck episode. We love watching your videos as a family every week as it comes out. And now, now you know. know. Oh, that's great. Isn't that great? Nice. They got to use it. That's awesome. Jacob spotted two EV Hummers in one day, one in a parking lot in Farmingdale, New York, and the second was caught on Jacob's dash cam in Ronconcoma, New York. Sean sent us this picture of some Gen 4 superchargers going online in Sparks, Nevada. And then Sean saw this Cybertruck charging at the Gen 4 supercharger in Sparks, Nevada later that week. Nice. Chris cited the Cybertruck driving through the Bay Area in California. Ron sent us this picture of a Tesla Model Y being used as a freebie rideshare in Palmetto Bay, Florida. Chris spotted this van with a Starlink setup driving around California. Nice. Renee saw these Teslas and a Ford Mach-E parked in, in Hanover, Germany. Tim found this new Tesla Roadster Hot Wheels for sale at the Costco in, in Issaquah, Washington. Didn't we just get one on ours? Where's ours? What? Don't, don't we have one? Uh, this is a, This is not the same. This oh, it's is, not? This is much smaller. Oh, that's a big We're, one? This is Patreon bonus story, by the way, folks. Don't, oh. don't worry. We'll, oh. we'll get to it later. We get to play with cars. Yeah. Tariq caught this all-electric bus in Los Angeles near Hollywood. And Tariq also spotted these unreleased Faraday Futures being tested at Willow Springs Racetrack. Hmm. Joel saw these Rivian trucks in South Beloit, Wisconsin. Ed sent us a picture of these Teslas on a delivery truck in Palm Springs, California. Kenny saw this row of white Teslas on the I-5 in California. That's awesome. And Lewis saw this blue wrapped Model 3 with the license plate Fuel LOL in Toronto, Canada. Nice. Thank nice. you, guys. This is so, I love this part of the show. All right, it's time for EV tips of the week. And uh, let's see who we got. Oh, we got Joel. Yes. Uh, so Joel tested out what uh, Somi had done a couple weeks ago. Um, he was going camping in his Model Y. He wanted to see um, how you're supposed to lock it. You lock it on the screen. So you're in your car, you're in camping mode, you're ready for bed or whatever, you hit the lock icon on the screen, not on your app. Okay. So because you're in your car, you click your car. I see. When you go walk to the grocery store, you do your phone, so that way when you walk back, the car unlocks Oh, because if you did it on your phone, it would unlock the car thinking that you were com you've come back. Right, it would basically be unlocked the whole time oh. because your phone's in the car, because again, when you're on your phone, you are away from the car. Gotcha. Right? You're going away and then you come back and you want it to unlock. You don't want it to be locked. That would be annoying. So you're in the car, you hit lock. You know what we need? We need those little buttons on the door that go up and down to show us what's going on. 1950s. Yeah. All right, time for supercharger reviews. That's where you guys get to go show us what's going on in the world of superchargers. This is a 12 stall supercharger in Bouchard, Quebec, Canada. It's in the basement parking of a shopping mall. It's located close to the steps to go up to the shopping mall. We give this an eight out of 10. Hi, Zach and Jesse. This is Rich at the Lake Dalton Supercharger. There are 12 superchargers here at 250 kilowatts. In Wisconsin, there is quite a bit around here. There's Culver's right behind me. There is Starbucks, um, Rosita's Pizza, Smoke Shop, Beef Jerky Experience, Noodles and Company. There's a Denny's off to that side, uh, Famous Dave's Barbecue. There are a few places to stay, Wingate and off to that side and Ramada over there. 
and it's quite a bit more up to that direction. There's McDonald's and a few other places to stay. Overall, this is a pretty, pretty nice supercharger. It is brand new, just went in this week. There is the lighted tops on the superchargers, so they're pretty easy to find at night. Right now, um, it's a little overcast, but pretty nice. I would give this one a nine out of 10. Back to you. Hey, Jesse and Zach, this is Ken. I'm at the Bloomington, Indiana Supercharger next to the Fresh Time grocery store on West 3rd Street. It's about two blocks off of I-69. It's a uh, 250 uh, kilowatt uh, supercharger. It is the only supercharger on I-69 between Indianapolis and Evansville. So uh, it's, a, it's a great location for charging up. Um, near the charger here, there's a couple of fast food restaurants, uh, Taco Bell, KFC, and normal stuff. Uh, there's a car wash if you're into it. Uh, the grocery store, the produce is good if you're into organic stuff. Um, otherwise, it's a uh, pretty uh, desolate barren around here. In fact, one of the superchargers, I don't know if you can notice it, but uh, one of the superchargers is uh, kind of knocked out of place. But uh, uh, otherwise, uh, it's a good, lo good location, easy access, easy on and off. Uh, and as I said, it's the only supercharger on I-69 between Indianapolis and pretty much the Kentucky state line. So uh, I'd, overall, I'd give this about a seven, seven and a half out of 10. And now you know. Hello world, this is Holger from Austria again. I'm here in Italy at Palma Nova Supercharger. This supercharger has uh, eight V2 stalls and eight V3 stalls with uh, preparations for four more. It is on the highway uh, from Trieste to Venezia and it's located at the outlet center with a lot of stores and some restaurants and there's also a toilet. So I rate this a uh, 7 out of 10. Now you know. Thank you so much for doing Supercharger Reviews. If you want to see a map on our website with all the Supercharger Reviews on it, you can see it and you can also upload your own reviews. It's pretty cool. Hasn't broken yet. Pretty amazed. <laughs> Tell, you just jinxed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's so been yeah. working for years. Go check it out while it still works. <laughs> all right, what do we got for new Superchargers, Jesse? We got the 16 stall in Luling, Texas. We got number 45 in Arizona, the 16 stall in Phoenix. Number 40 in Nevada is the 20 stall in Las Vegas at West Craig Road. We got the two stall 120 kilowatt in Shangzhou, China. The 19 stall at Gigafactory Berlin, Brandenburg, Germany. Yeah. Hell yeah. Number 52 in Washington is the 12 stall in George, Washington. 16 stall in East Point at North Commerce Drive, Georgia. The 16 stall in Norcross, Georgia. Number five in Slovenia is the eight stall in Kursko, Slovenia. Number 35 in Michigan is the 12 stall in Jackson, Michigan. The 8 stall in Grimsby at South Service Road, Ontario. Number 62 in Spain is the 12 stall in Castellon, Spain. Number 20 in Belgium is the 16 stall in Mons, Belgium. Number 74 in Pennsylvania is the 16 stall in Pittsburgh at Freeport Road. The 16 stall in Lawrenceville, Georgia. The 12 stall in Munchen Sendling, Germany. Number 87 in Taiwan is the 6 stall in Hinshu, Taiwan. Number 70 in Hong Kong is the 3 stall in Viwok, Hong Kong. Number 53 in Maryland is the 16 stall at Port Deposit. Number 31 in South Carolina is the 12 stall in Columbia at Forest Drive, South Carolina. The 20 stall in Bayreuth, Nord, Germany. Number 185 in Germany is the 8 stall in Altdorf, Germany. Number 201 in Canada is the 8 stall in Calgary at 130 Ave Southeast, Alberta, Canada. Number 122 in the UK is the 16 stall in Pease Pottage, UK. The 4 stall 120 kilowatt in Haifei, China. The 4 stall 120 kilowatt in Shuzhan, China. Number 1892 in China is the 6 stall at Shaoxing, China. Number 16 in Delaware is the 16 stall in Newcastle. Number 96 in Japan is the 6 stall in Tokyo at Adichi Sakibara, Japan. Number 52 in Georgia is the 16 stall in Marietta. Number 40 in Colorado is the 8 stall in Almosa, Colorado. Number 39 in Ohio is the 12 stall in Shaker Heights. Number 68 in Virginia is the 8 stall at Stony Creek, Virginia. Number 55 in Illinois is the 8 stall in Pontiac, Illinois. Number 142 in Texas, 2045 in the USA, and 5,751 in the world is the 15 stall in Humble, Texas. Nice. And you know, speaking of Texas, there's a little event. I can't remember what it's about. It's something to do with a truck. Uh, we're gonna be there though. I remember yes. that part. And it's gonna be an after party. I think there's like a before party and an after party. We're gonna be hosting it, the Cybertruck after party. 
Uh, we would love to see you guys there. I don't know if it's full yet, if the reservation's full. I think we have a link down below where you can register if it's not already full. But we're also going to be live streaming it, so you don't have to come all the way to Texas to yep. join us. Um, we're going to be live streaming it on our channel. Um, we're hopefully going to be talking to a lot of other um, fun YouTubers while yeah. we're there and lots of other people. Um, we're, there might be a Cybertruck there. We might get to go, mm -hmm. you know, in it. Um, I don't know if you visit, if you get to go in the Cybertruck. I don't I don't think so. Because uh, <laughs> don't know how that works. It's going to be right. pretty crazy. Yeah. We don't know all the details yet. No. We're just the hosts. You know what I mean? We're just we're just the guys talking. But We're just the talking heads. Right. But uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. I mean, to me, the whole purpose of this is the community. Like, I'm just so looking forward to hanging out with you guys. It's been a while. We all know because of COVID and everything where mm -hmm. we've gotten a reason to kind of all get together. So I'm just I'm hoping it's a fun event. I'm hoping the weather's good. Um, I'm just super excited to see everybody, whether it's digitally, you know, whether you call mm -hmm. in or something or whether we see you there. Because, yeah, we're going to be live streaming for hours and hours, having so much fun talking to so many people learning so much about the Cybertruck, yeah. hopefully. And it was really fun when we did like our uh, Giga Texas and we were able to live stream that. Of course, we were here, which isn't as cool. Um, now we're going to be yeah. at a bar in Austin. And our same buddy Noah from Corporate Streams is going to be doing all of the behind the scenes stuff, which is amazing. So it should be a, just a wonderful event. I cannot wait. It's coming up any day now, November 30th. So mark that on your calendar. Maybe make it a sick day. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, let's just enjoy it. And I want to thank our Patreon patrons for making this show possible. I know we missed them scrolling past here already, but thank you so much for supporting us. This show doesn't happen without you. We'll see you guys next time. Now, now you know. know.